And now one of my favorite maneuvers, uh, my signature maneuver in the decathlon in Sportsman was the, uh, the hammerhead. Now, what we're trying to make this look like is that as you pull up vertical and you come to a stop, you want to do the pivot in such a way to where you, uh, that as it pivots around that there is no pitching and uh, no rolling of any kind. Now at this point the airplane, the, the engine is going at full blast and so it would be very easy for the torque of the airplane to try to twist you around. So as we would mentioned before, when it comes to how this thing is drawn, you don't have to fly it this way. First thing is that you don't want to do any hard corners. This will be a standard quarter loop segment, okay, uh, for both the entry and the exit. You do not have to, to come out lower than your entry altitude. They only draw it this way so that if you're going to do a roll on the upline, that the roll will be uh, symbolized above here. If you're going to do a roll on the downline, it'll be symbolized below the entry. But you could finish high or low, it's completely up to you. These two radii do not have to be the same size, and you don't have to have the same entry and exit altitude. But as you do the pivot, you must be able to pivot within a half a wingspan. So what they're looking for is that, that you're no further away than that. Anything more than a half a wingspan, and that's when they start taking points off. For every half a wingspan that you are out from your original point, that's another point off. So you start with a 10 and then you start losing points. So this maneuver is kind of hard to do because as you come up here, Everybody uh, thinks that, oh, well, I just want it to, to yaw to the left, so I'll just step on the left rudder. Well, guess what? As you, uh, as, you step on the, as you step on the left rudder, what wants to happen here is this wing tip here is going pretty fast. And so as it gets extra lift on here, it's trying to pull over, and that puts a roll in there that you don't want. So as you step on the left rudder to make the airplane yaw left toward the pilot's left ear, what you also have to do is you have to start feeding in right stick that as the airplane tries to roll left that your uh, right stick will will do that and it will keep this wing tip from flying out of plane so then the airplane will, will rotate this way. Now the next thing is is that your propeller um, your spiral uh, your propeller is going hardcore uh, it's going to full power and you're going to have a gyroscopic effect. And this is one of the first times that most pilots have ever really dealt with pure gyroscopics. Now, what the propeller's doing, and, and again, we're talking about a like homing engine. So the, from the pilot's point of view, the airplane the propeller goes clockwise. So what's going on here is that as you put in a left yaw on the propeller disc, that force is going to come out of the propeller disc 90 degrees away in the direction of rotation. So the force you put in here, the left yaw, it's going to come out at the 6 o'clock position in relation to the pilot, and it's going to try to pitch the airplane over on, the, on its back. So now you're going to have to feed in forward stick as the airplane's rotating to keep it from doing that. So that's the second force taking you out of plane. So on the upline, uh, as you step on the left rudder, you need to put in right stick as well to keep this wingtip from coming over. And then the airplane's going to start trying to pitch toward the pilot's head and they'll have to feed in forward stick. Now what you don't want to do is to put in too much forward stick. Now here's the second time that you can get into kind of a dangerous situation that would be a, an inverted spin entry. If people are doing the rotation here and they push in too much forward uh, stick, they can get to where they're like this and then that will be an inverted spin entry. And again, like we said before, the, anytime the airplane's doing something you don't expect, immediately abandon the maneuver. So and, aggressively center the stick and the rudder pedals, and then once the nose is below the horizon, get the power back to idle. The heavy end of the airplane will seek the center of the earth. The airflow will start going like it should, and now the airplane will be back under control. Uh, so in this particular case, how, what's a nice little visual trick that you can use to keep from overdoing the stick, uh, the, the pitching, as you try to counteract the gyroscopic uh, actions? And here's a neat little trick that Rich Stowell taught me. He says that, now what most people will do is that they will pick a road, and instead of doing, going along the road like they would in a loop, they'll go across the road. So they'll be flying along, and when they feel that they're directly over the road, they'll pull into the vertical, and that as they do the uh, pivot, they're trying to uh, 
with all of their controls, they're trying to walk that wingtip down along that road. And he says, that's the standard way of teaching, but what I'm going to suggest to you is something different. You're looking at your sight gauge, and you got it on the horizon, and as you begin the pivot, don't watch the wingtip. Let the wingtip drop out of your view. Keep your sight line directly on that spot on the horizon. And that as the wingtip drops away, allow it to drop away. So don't look down to the road. You're looking out here. And then feed in enough forward stick to put the nose to the same spot that the wingtip just vacated. So if you can get it to rotate 90 degrees in plane and not have any twisting or pitching, then the second half will work out. So this is the key. So keep looking there. Step on the left rudder, let the wingtip drop away, use your forward stick to put your nose to the same spot that the wingtip just left, not too much, not too little, and then after that, now you can, then as the nose continues to drop, now you can let your, your sight line stay with the nose as you go for the down line. Now the last part, you don't want to have any pendulum effects at the bottom. So at this point you have full left rudder. As you get about within 30 degrees away from full down, very quickly, go full opposite rudder and then neutral. And if you do that, the airplane will whoosh, and it'll just stop like putting a key in a lock. So this is the hammerhead. Uh, yes, and the way to have a good pivot is that you have a good vertical upline leading up to it. Um, so uh, you have to uh, not freeze the stick and pitch once you've pulled up the vertical. Because as the airplane slows, it might come off. Uh, in the case of the decathlon, okay. it creeps on its back. Okay. I've lined up uh, according on this road, and I'm in uh, the bottom of the yellow arc. Now I'm going to be bring, begin my pull-up, and I've transitioned my gaze to the left, lined the sighting guides up right on the horizon. Right. Now we're, I'm going to start the pivot below 40 knots. There's the full left rudder, and trying to minimize pendulum and set up a vertical line again. Yeah. So notice that as he uh, put in the left rudder, and then it was right stick and a little bit of forward stick. And again, so you don't pendulum at the bottom, you put in some opposite rudder before you get to your vertical down line. Correct. Here we go again. Looking at the sighting guide, laying that right on the horizon, both sides. Watching the airspeed, 40 knots, start to pivot. Lined up with the road. Now here, a lot of people they will tend to get negative on their downlines, so you wanna you wanna watch out for that.